the practice of law is changing rapidly. The challenge, how do we teach 21st century skills to law students to prepare them for all of this without adding a year or two or three to law school? Well, I suggest we can do it one way is to get out of the way and let students choose a topic relevant to the 21st century practice of law that they can go deep on that's relevant to their career. And my approach or attempt to do this at Concord Law School is the course called Future of Law Practice. And the Future of Law Practice class is two credits. It's a semester long course and it's required for students in their third year. The course is taught entirely online using our learning management system and live classroom. And students both do a paper and a presentation. Uh, so we decided, or I decided, well, we, we need to have a book. You know, it's, it just feels good. You know, I'm from that generation, still needed books. It turns out I read in the paper that millennials still read paper books too, so who knew? Anyway, the book is uh, Tomorrow's Lawyer by Richard Susskind. You've probably heard of him. He's a speaker and author on uh, technology and changes in, in the law practice. And we also came up with uh, three different sources of videos. Uh, one was me lecturing on futuring and uh, emerging ethics areas, research, presentation skills. And Kelly put on this great course called the Digital Law Practice. And it's still up there, and it's there for people to use, and they had topics like virtual law practice and um, was it, uh, <laughs> uh, con uh, automated document uh, assembly and things like that. Um, and also, my special guest, Professor Richard Herman, uh, he's got over 30 years of experience doing uh, legal career counseling, and he wrote, I don't know, 10 books or so on the topic. And, and he talks uh, in video lectures in the course about um, girding yourself for an uncertain future, hot practice areas, and practice areas impervious to the business cycle. And the students, in addition, they go out and they find articles based on questions I pose in the bulletin board. And these articles might be on techniques of doing futuring, you know, like trend analysis, scenario analysis, and so on. And they'll, they'll go and they'll also look at relevant areas such as competing with non-lawyers. And they'll critique the articles, they'll summarize them, and they share them out. So it's a constructivist learning atmosphere. It's not my voice only that's being heard. It's not just Professor Herman, it's not just Professor Susskind. It's the students bringing their voices and their relevance and information in. And there's two major outcomes in the course, or two aspects of the course. One is a paper, and the other one's a presentation. That paper is actually, it could be an academic paper if they want, or they could design a CLE, or they could or a propose legislation, and then they need to, of course, back that up with lots of sources. And so here's how the project goes. It's incremental. They, first they select a topic, and the professor will prove the topic, and then they submit a annotated bibliography based on the research, and then it goes to a draft, and then to the final paper. Uh, and at each stage, they're getting feedback from their professor. And so this actually has two outcomes that I like. One is, of course, when you get done, it looks a whole heck of a lot better, right? Uh, the other one is, is it teaches students to think in a project management sense so they can avoid that malpractice trap of doing everything at the last minute. One of the themes of the course is concision. It turns out people have short attention spans today, especially in business. So the paper, 10 pages max. The presentation, 6 minutes, 40 seconds. And I'll tell you about that in a little bit. So topics, what did students talk about? Well, sometimes they, they surprise you because it's, it's their interest, but some of them are, are, are not surprising. So I'll talk about virtual law practice, um, talk about uh, referral services, and uh, one of them uh, was uh, legal services to returning veterans. And 
one of the practice areas that came up with was uh, um, marijuana law, which I, it turns out could be a real smoking area practice. <laughs> so here's a sneak peek at our, at our live classroom. And uh, you can see there's a little sideshow there on the side, and you can see all the, all the, the people participating. And what, uh, what's nice about it is the students send me the slides in advance, and then I advance the slides so they don't have to worry about that. And they're doing an audio broadcast. I tell them if they want to do a video, they can, but nobody's taken up, me up on that yet. And if they miss it, they can watch it in the archives. Uh, we go based on the Pecha Kucha method. Some of you might be familiar with that. Uh, they do 20 seconds per slide for 20 slides. And the, uh, the goal, as you can see on the slide, is avoiding death by PowerPoint. This allows the students to focus on what it is they want to get across. The most important thing. They need to tell us about the topic, and they need to tell us why their solution of the topic is, is valuable and useful. And that gives them maximum impact in minimum amount of time. So some of the challenges to the course. Well, one was, for me, getting out of the way and giving the students a whole heck of a lot of control over what the content of the course was. The other one was, and, and some of you professors might have students that don't like deadlines. I had a couple. Um, and I'll tell you how, how I've overcome that in, in future courses. And not everybody likes to be on time presentations either. And the other thing is, is you have a lot, a few billion people on the internet at 9 o'clock at night. Sometimes it slows down a little. So what did I learn? Well, it's a culture shift. It was something very new to everybody. So what I've done for now we're in our second term, I've been telling them even before you get into the class, this is what the class is about. This is how the class runs, and this is why we do it. And so it's, it's running more smoothly that way. Uh, in training, if you haven't presented on the internet before, that's something new. There's some technology. There's some techniques there. Um, and I let them know all the deadlines now, right at the beginning of the course. And that way they can calendar them. Um, technology, it's important to have a great technology team, and I did. And it's important to stay in communication with them. Um, important to give reminders. So even though I told them to calendar, I still send out the deadlines as we go along so nobody's surprised. And give the students lots of opportunities to practice. So positives, um, practice, research and writing, and speaking. Important lawyer skills. And also, they're, they're writing and researching not just legal material, but other areas of interest uh, beyond legal. And I expose them to merging ethics issues, and they get practice conferencing online. Um, more positives, the students love their peers' presentation. They're very impressed with what the other students had done. And that naturally led to great networking opportunities. And in a couple of cases, I was able to connect the students to outside resources and alumni based on now that I know what their interests are. Because you go to law school with an idea, you might adopt a new idea as you're in law school. So a lot of these students got to write on the reason they went to law school. So it helps them connect. And they end up with a unique writing sample. And if they're played it smart, they actually have an idea they can implement after law school. So can we teach and prepare students for every possibility that they're going to get into in 21st century law practice? Well, probably not. But what can we do? We can give them the lay of the land. What are the emerging issues? What are they likely to face? And then to give them an opportunity to go deep on a topic that they're very interested in and learn how to analyze trends, identify threats and opportunities, and think strategically about how they're going to meet those threats and opportunities. And in that way, we can prepare them for the 21st century practice of law.